Are you a master of NLP language patterns or are you just starting to use them? Or maybe you want to use them but you don't really figure out where to start. And actually, there are not really many sources in the realm of NLP books and courses to really show you where to start, what to do next and what to do based on your specific case. I am doing my best to provide such resources here on this channel but I'm not telling that everything is perfect either here, so it is always something to improve. People are usually too disorganized when they want to master hypnotic language patterns or NLP uh, persuasive patterns in general. They try to use a bit of everything at the same time and it is way too confusing because there are way too many uh, patterns. Actually, there is like 50 plus years of study on the topic of uh, them, the creators, trying to figure out how it works. So from all of that, what does apply to you specifically? That is the point here. Usually one of the main limiting beliefs of people who may be like you uh, learning language patterns is to think that it is like learning a whole new language. And to some extent it may look like this if you really try to figure out everything. But the big point here is that you don't need to figure out everything. You don't need to figure out all the Milton model patterns plus the sleight of mouth patterns plus all the things about about, uh, time distortion. You don't need to master all of that before you can use them in a persuasive scenario. Most likely, unless you want to become a teacher yourself and start uh, transferring those skills to other people, in that case you probably need more than normal. But if you just want to use some NLP techniques to persuade and influence others, you probably need like 5 to 10 language patterns that work really well. And that's all. You don't need more, you don't need to figure out everything from all the neurosemantics, how does that align with the time distortion meta pattern from Milton. You don't need all of that. You just need 5 to 10 really effective patterns that work for you. And those will probably not be the same ones than the ones who that work for somebody else. I certainly don't use 100% of language patterns out there when I am influencing other people. I use probably maybe 20 patterns that I keep using all the time or, the, or variations of them. Once you have your nest of 5 to 10 patterns that work really well, then you can just adapt them based on the person in front of you, make your sentences shorter or um, longer depending on how the conversation is going, how well it is going. And that way, if you start with that goal in mind, figuring out 5 to 10 really effective language patterns that naturally fit my style of speaking, it will go way faster than if you try to figure out the whole NLP language first before using it in real life. Because in the end, it is your experience from real life that will give you competence, much more than the things you learn from me or any book uh, out there. The second big belief is my brain doesn't work that fast or my brain doesn't go fast enough. When they watch somebody doing sleight of mouth on screen or any kind of negotiation on screen broken down, people think that that uh, their brain has to work extremely fast because they presuppose it is about conscious understanding of the language pattern before using it. Absolutely not. It happens automatically when you have been doing that stuff on your own, practicing that stuff on your own. And some people who have been in sales, who have been in, in jobs where they had to persuade others, they just have developed that uh, on the field, which is more scary, of course, to stop using those skills directly in front of people. So I'm going to give you in this video something that you can do on your own before practicing in front of somebody else uh, in a real context. But they Basically, your experience in the real world is what will make you connect the dots and make your brain go faster. It is not about having a fast brain before using it in real life. Absolutely not. Even the best master you can see of about uh, conversational hypnotic language or language patterns, the best master ever has started where you are right now. It is warranted. No matter what they pretend that they, they knew everything before everybody else, no matter what they pretend, they started where you are right now in the same way. So it is not that your brain doesn't work fast enough, it is more that no one really gave you the right method to learn. If I was asking you right now, what is specifically your method to learn language patterns? I guess a lot of you would just say, well, I try using them and it doesn't work. 
Yeah, but what specifically do you do to try using them? What did you do? What, what have you been setting your mind on? Did you even have any sort of outcome when you used them the first time? So the main method here, open your ears widely, the main method to practice language patterns the way I learned specifically is to target only one big situation in mind or type of people in mind you want to influence. Really micro target for one thing. Because because trying to learn the NLP language theoretically before using it is a dead end. It is like in many European countries where they try to teach languages, it just does not work because they try to teach kids theoretically instead of making them practice with the few things they know. And of course, if you just know one or two little words, it won't be as effective as if you have the whole language. But even just one or two words right and starting to do uh, your conversation with just those two one or two words is going to make you improve and make you spot oh, okay the next thing I need is that word. The same thing with NLP language patterns you just start with whatever you have at hand whatever you have in your head and you notice okay what is the main gap right now. I did this it did not work obviously because you're starting out but what is the main thing uh, that would make me go to the next level. The main, is it about a lack of rapport? Is it about, oh, I don't understand how this um, word works. Uh, the time frame, oh, that person got me stuck with a future consequence because they pointed out something in the future I didn't know about. Okay, how can I allevi alleviate that? From there, once you have feedback from real conversation, then you know what to focus on. If you start with nothing and no examples in mind of what it looks like and sounds like when you use them, then I can't help you because there is no ground to build from. Once you have a ground foundation to build from, then I can tell you specifically, okay, this is where to work on, this is what to delete because you don't need that, etc. So only pick one main situation and if we are being honest for a second, you and me right here, if you want to learn NLP language patterns, it is most likely because there is one person or one type of person or one specific situation in which you want to use them. Even if you're not completely being honest with yourself, you know deep down there is this one person you would like to be able to influence or there is this one situation in which you are not as confident with your speaking ability as you would like to be. Only focus on that one. This one, and it is, if it is something personal, you don't need to uh, tell it out loud. Just focus on that one because it will clarify, it will simplify the whole field of NLP to only what you need for that situation or person at hand. So with a very clear outcome in mind, notice with that person, or with that situation in mind, okay, I want to influence that girl in my classroom. Never works like that because many guys try to learn NLP because they want to uh, seduce girls in their classroom. It doesn't work like that because in the real world it works by talking to, working on yourself and your abilities to communicate, then talking to several people and out of them one of them will like you too. It is a numbers game but let's say okay this is your scenario, this is your context of life you want to influence women to like you. This is one example among many. In that scenario Clearly specify what is your outcome, specifically what do you want out of this conversation. Because many people enter a conversation or a situation where they want to influence the other person with not really any clear outcome in mind. Or their outcome is, uh, I want it to be okay. I want the situation to go well. What does that mean? going well. Okay, let's elaborate. What does that mean for you when something goes well in the interaction? Does that mean the person is reaching out and hugs you? In a work environment, I guess no, it is probably not the, the outcome you have in mind. So what specifically are you looking for in terms of response you want to get from the person in front of you? What is the response, nonverbal, verbal, from their eye contact, uh, which action are they going to take? The more, the clearer it becomes in your mind, the more your language will adapt when you will be in a situation where you need that because your unconscious mind from there will know where to go. So once you have this clear outcome in mind, that 
is where this whole thing becomes interesting. You are going to practice language patterns. I suggest in the beginning to practice them writing down or recording yourself, one or the other, the one you prefer, uh, using that with a few sentences like the ones from my video on the Milton model. If you don't know where to start from, just start there. It is more than enough to uh, practice your skills, way more than enough. Just start with that video, for example, or any other you have in mind. If you have read a book about like the Persuasion Skills Black Book by Rintu Basu or even my book or whatever you want, just pick a set of language patterns and write down examples of those language patterns specifically with the outcome you have in mind. So if the outcome is, uh, okay, I want my boss to give me a raise, pretty classic example, um, and the language pattern might be, what would it be like if? Okay, write examples of that language pattern with the, the, the outcome in mind, I want to get a raise. First of all, the outcome might be broken down into the state the person would need to be into to give you that response. So if your boss was inclined to give you a raise, probably that your boss would be more enjoying his day, would be in a more positive state. Okay, I can start from there. So with the language pattern, what would it be like if, that's a sentence, I could start with how can I use that language pattern to make the person in front of me feel good about their current day? Okay, what would it be like if you had the best vacation of your life right now? Oh, I am just asking that out of curiosity because with my wife, we just went into this great vacation and blah, blah, blah. And I was just wondering out of curiosity, John or Mr. Smith or whatever the name is, uh, what would it be like for you, and I was asking that to everybody in the office, what would it be like for you to get the greatest vacation of your whole year, of, the, of your whole life? And starting from there, okay, that's an example, an example of a sentence you could say that would influence the person. That one alone will probably not be enough or not. Uh, it may not be the best targeted with the person in front of you because it will need also to fit their personality, their desires, the way they like to, uh, the way they like you to communicate with them, many other factors. But at least with that, you have something to start. You have something in mind you can start practicing your skills with. So this one is an example. What would it be like if, and in the video on the Milton model, you will have many other examples of language patterns. You just practice, that is your session, once per day, you write 10 to 20 different language patterns with the outcome in mind you have for the situation or type of people you want to influence in your life. You have the list of 10 to 20 different language patterns uh, or variations of the same one and you write as fast as possible examples of what you could say in the situation you have in mind where you want to influence others with the right outcome in mind or if I want to get the person to relax and slow down during a session as a coach, okay, what would it be like if you could start to relax deeply and feel more well, feel more grounded in your current life, or feel more appeased about all the troubles that have been bothering you so far? Okay, those are examples of immediate commands used with that outcome in mind. Relax, calm down, and the goal really is rep because when you have been learning a language in the first place, when you started speaking as you were two, three, four years old, you went fast because you had to gather words fast. This is the way our brain is learning. Our brain is learning with one simple tweak. We hit on the right spot, but we hit multiple times on the right spot. The right spot here is use language patterns with only one situation in mind, only one big specific outcome in mind, and then write them as fast as possible with all the different variations you can find on my videos or anywhere else. You just write down as many examples as possible of what you could say in a situation like that with those phrases, those sentences. Once you have done that, they will be in your head in the exact same way you rehearse a move on like on the tennis court, you just rehearse the move. At some point, the move becomes automatic. It is exactly, open widely, it is exactly the same thing with language. It is not about reading more stuff and trying to memorize, theorize, memorize. Mem it doesn't work like that. I know it is what your, your stupid teachers told you in school cool, but it is not how it works here with NLP. It works by practicing, 
for real and then using in the real world your your uh, the things you have been practicing and yes it won't work every time the very first time you try but it is what will form your competence you will get a few failures a few positive feedback because you have done something wrong that led you to figure out oh this is what i need to do and from there your competence is going to start building up and then after maybe like five, six trials, depending on how complex it is for you in your case, at some point you will get one positive response. You will get what you wanted. At some point it is going to happen anyway. From there, what your brain is going to do is to create confidence because now you have the sense of competence. Oh, I have done that. This person, I got them to say yes. If I was in sales, for example, I got them to say yes. Now I know I can do it. And coming from the I can, it is a whole different neurological structure and physiological embodiment than I'm trying to use it. Coming from I know I can because I have done it, even if it was an easy case, it was not the, the most difficult, but I have still done it. From there, your skills are going to skyrocket and go way faster. Coming from experience, I know what I'm talking about. It is going to go way faster because your brain is going to work faster with that presupposition that you are going to make it happen for real. Therefore, my main advice is which situations, if the one you have in mind is kind of too difficult, because asking a raise to your boss, that is something you would have only one chance or maybe two or three, but most likely it is something you have only one chance of doing. And if it doesn't work, <laughs> then you're out. So which situations could you find, think about that right now, which situations could you find that are similar, that are likely to be similar to the one you have in mind, but that are way less challenging? Maybe asking somebody something to a stranger in the street or asking for a refund or not a refund, but like um, downsizing the price to the cashier at Starbucks, that could be a similar situation to asking for a ride to your bus. But that is a less challenging situation because if the person behind the counter at Starbucks says no, well, no big deal, like don't really care. But it is a situation that will train you to use those skills in real life. And when you have been using them multiple times in real life, then your, your brain doesn't work the same way. You will have already have reference experiences for how to speak, how to position my voice effectively, how to look at the person, all those micro things that look like, oh, they're unimportant, but that are actually like 90% of the whole thing, those things will become more automated. And when you will be in the real challenging situation, like asking for a raise to your boss, you will be much more prepared than if you just go uh, because you have just watched this video and you're like, oh yeah, now I, I get it. Now you don't get it just by watching a video, you get it by experiencing in real world. So when you will have been doing a few less difficult and less challenging things in the real world, your brain will have been building more skill set, more um, sense of competence. And then when you go into a situation with somebody, you really have something to lose or to win uh, by influencing that person, you will get the response much more easily. And the final tip, uh, if you still struggle to figure out, yeah, but what should I start with right now? I'm not really sure. Very basic, my friend. Just ask yourself, okay, what did I do today to develop my skills with language patterns? What did I do today? And what can I do tomorrow? That is the easiest way to develop your skills. What did you do today? Maybe you watched this, okay, that maybe that was something that improved your understanding. Okay, fine. What can you do tomorrow from there? Doesn't need to be more than two minutes per day, at the very least. Doesn't need to be more complex than this, but at least do one thing every day to practice your skills and in no time you will get there.